Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman and with my co-host John Troyer and you're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in tech coverage. Happy to welcome back to the program Arturo Suarez, who's with Canonical Program Director. Haven't had him on for a couple of hours. Arturo, thanks for joining me again. <laughs> thanks for having me. All right, and David Safai, who's the CEO of Trilio Data. We introduced your company to our community last year yes. at the show in our backyard in Boston. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for joining us here in beautiful Vancouver. Thanks for having me again. Good to see you. All right, so David, let, let, let's start with you. It's sure. uh, you know a, a year since we we, we, we talked to you. Uh, you know, data management absolutely uh, just uh, you know s such a hot space. Yeah. Um, bring us into that update as to your company, what's happened in OpenStack, and let's get into it from there. Sure. It's been uh, it's been an exciting year since I've seen you last. You know, I think part of it it's been the evolution and the maturity of this ecosystem that we're seeing. More uh, business units are now moving production workloads into this environment. So the call to Trilio has, has really taken place. Uh, a lot of the times you're seeing now the, these, uh, these cloud teams having to scramble to find the proper data protection solution. Trilio being a cloud native backup solution built for this environment is just a logical Collection. Yeah, it, it, it's it's one of those things. I I, may, I scratch my head. Maybe you can explain to me. <laughs> is it, remember back? You know, it was like when we did virtualization. Yeah. It was like it took a little while before we had a good backup. You know, solution for there. Mm -hmm. When we go to cloud, it's like wait, oh wait, let's not forget that things like security and, and backup. Um, yeah. Why does it take a little bit while for that to kind of catch up uh, in, into the market and have a, have good solutions? So if you think about it this way, when people start this this journey, right? The initial intent a lot of the time is to have some stateless workloads. Yeah. We know that that's not the case. Yeah, test Perception of right? yeah. reality. Yeah. And you're going to see it in the container market as well. So that's kind of the evolution that you see. That's kind of the draw, that's, that's what we see. Okay, uh, Arturo, explain to us how Canonical fits. So, um, obviously Canonical powers uh, more OpenStack than anyone else uh, does OpenStack Foundation survey. We like to say it, but, uh, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's a fact as well, right? Uh, so we, uh, we are happy to partner with, uh, with Trilio. We've always been uh, very keen to, to accommodate the ecosystem uh, in our story. Uh, Trilio Vault matches very well our, our idea of uh, having better economics as well for the data center, and it opens up OpenStack, not only for the, the original goal of OpenStack, like the, the hyperscalers or the scale-out applications, right, which, which are cloud-native, if you want, and are born on OpenStack, and OpenStack is born for them, right, for that type of application, but now it opens up to uh, a, a wide range of existing I wouldn't call it legacy, but, but you, you know what I mean, like old applications that are, um, are really not going to be refreshed. You know, you only refresh that many applications year after year, 10% mm. of, your, of your applications, 15% if you have a good uh, DevOps team. Uh, those still are suffering from locking, from being uh, in that virtualization world or not even there, right? Uh, and uh, with OpenStack and the addition of, of Trilio, as a backup DR uh, solution, uh, you suddenly provide what, a, what a, a pet VM needs, right? So it suddenly opens up to a, a large real estate of the data center uh, to be accommodated in OpenStack seamlessly. That's great. The, the um, curious here at uh, OpenStack Summit this year, uh, yeah. kind of the customers you're seeing, someone said to me the other day that, um, you know, the people here this year are people with mortgages to pay. And, and they meant that comp in a complimentary way in that they're not like the cloud astronauts or they're not arguing about the philosophy of what is a true cloud. Yeah. They actually have business to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, I don't know, can you talk about some what you're seeing here at this show and, and sure. you know, the, the pe kinds of people, or maybe, you know, who are, the, who are the folks that are using, or the kind of folks that are using Trilio today? Yeah, and I think the, the conversation has been, um, it's a high quality, conversation, higher caliber conversation, where it's a lot of day two conversations uh, that have taken place. So um, it's been engaging. People need to act, they need to move. They've got these, these fabulous clouds that slice and dice and they expand in every which way possible. Now they say, all right, 
we have to codify this. You know, the, the, the journey to the cloud doesn't need to be painful. And that's one of the great things that Canonical's done well, right? Build, operate, manage, here's your cloud, we're going to stand it up. You know, it's everything that you need. Now with Trilio, it's not, can I add backup to it, like fries, it's, just not, it's not like that. It's adding data protection to codify that, and, and again, that's why we're seeing these people start they're coming. They're asking that, they're asking that, that question. Uh, are, you, are you mostly talking to folks over in the, in the enterprise space? I mean, obviously with OpenStack, right, so a lot of the conversations in the carrier space, they have some slightly different needs. Um, or, or how's that working for you? No, it's, it's, it's broadened. Okay. Um, I'd say uh, our customer base is everything from manufacturing to we're seeing financial services all over the world uh, adopt OpenStack. Um, so, again, it goes to the testament of uh, adopting and building much easier than ever before, and the economics are uh, yeah, a big benefit. In, in terms of building on top of OpenStack, mm -hmm. or, or you know, so directly with the APIs, how, and, and mm -hmm. uh, OpenStack has a number of components, all mm -hmm. API, all with APIs mm -hmm. and componentized, so um, how has that relationship been, working, working with Canonical and um, the both Canonical, Canonical's uh, OpenStack as well as the, the standard, you know, yeah. getting used to the standard parts of uh, open, the OpenStack stack. Yeah, so we, yeah. we certify mm -hmm. uh, ourselves across the distribution, but you know, part of this is the seamless integration. If you're leveraging Juju Charms, for example, the lifecycle management uh, of that cloud. So whether you're going through an upgrade process or you're staying up a new cloud, Trilio just fits hand in glove with Canonical. Yeah. At the end of the day, APIs are APIs. OpenStack is OpenStack, right? Those, that, yeah. those, that is very well defined. Is is how you build it. Um, when you build it to just take a picture of it and, and have an OpenStack up and running or when you build it to have an open stack that's going to be in your data center for 10 years, for 20 years, right? That is upgradable, et cetera, right? So that is our main difference. The open stack at the end of the day, the API is just consumable just you know, for us mm -hmm. as, as, as well as for the other guys. It's exactly the same API. We don't modify, not everybody, right? But we do not modify anything from open stack. It's pure upstream open stack, right? There's no real difference there. Okay, what about, uh, I think service providers would be you know, key, key market for this. Uh, you know, how, how does that play in for both of you? I mean, the service provider market, of course, is a big adopter of OpenStack, and then now you're seeing also with uh, NFV environment, the, the rapid adoption there, it's been, uh, it's been an important add to the OpenStack cloud. If you think about how do I recover my configurations uh, in that environment, so. Yeah. Exactly, and we mentioned before, right? Like the uh, the uh, the expensive real estate, and even in the world of uh, of service providers, when you move out of the core, right? Uh, and and there's and there are um, challenging SLAs, right? So DR is effectively and that data protection as well, because the, the, the VNFs that they're running are effectively managing. Uh, uh, data that is prone to be protected, especially you know, in, in, in countries in Europe, for instance, with the GDPR, et cetera. You really need to have accountability mm -hmm. of what data is in your data center without you know, uh, taking into account the economics of having an extra data center there, right? So the DR uh, and data protection uh, elements are key to the, to the, to the cloud strategy of uh, service providers, right? What are folks looking at as, as cross-cloud strategies and backup? Like what is the target, right? I'm assuming either cross data center or also up to the public cloud. How are, how are people looking at that? Either, either one. So we, we see it, uh, as far as the back-end store and the target, uh, we really have certified ourselves across any backup target. Uh, within Canonical, the using Ceph storage, uh, you have the added benefit of geo-replication, right? So if the DR story starts to uh, evolve there, so if site goes down, you have geo-replication, you have Trilio there to spin back up, that, spin that other site back up again. Um, relative to the, to the public cloud, uh, you know, as the hybrid world continuously evolves, um, you know, we're ready for that. Uh, we have qualified against S3, for example, um, but no one's banging down the door just at this moment. I think a lot of people just need to get the blocking and tackling done and leverage, the, you know, really the, the assets that they have Absolutely. to make the most out of it, get the ROI there, um, and then we'll see if the how the demand evolves. So the beauty is to have the, uh, the the choice, right? The freedom of choice, which mm. is with some other private. Uh, infrastructure software doesn't allow you to do like this is this is the one thing you can eat today, right? Uh, so that freedom of choice, whether you want to put that in a in a public cloud if if it's you know security compliant and, and whatnot, or you want to have 
uh, that in, a, in another region, in another uh, replicated somewhere else in another storage backend that is colder and cheaper, and you know, so that freedom of choice is, is a is a great uh, is a great asset, right? Arturo, what are you looking forward to in, in terms of the evolution of, of OpenStack storage and data capabilities? So, um, OpenStack is already uh, opened up for absolutely everything, right? Uh, storage, in fact, in OpenStack was the, I mean, I have to, my, this is my 15th OpenStack, right? So I've been following <laughs> it from the, from the very, very beginning, right? Uh, so the storage in OpenStack is actually was the, the, the project that was mature first. Well, I didn't right? want to start the question off with, well, OpenStack storage is kind of done, right? Yes. But, 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 it, uh, but, but it is, right? At the end of the day, when you look at all the, all the even existing, more legacy type of, uh, of storage filers, uh, already have an integration with OpenStack. OpenStack made a turn a few years ago, again, I'm telling you know, old stories of OpenStack, but when, uh, when we started uh, doing Cinder and the Cinder drivers, we're applying that to Neutron and the Neutron plugins now for network, but the Cinder drivers actually are a very easy way to plug in literally any other storage solution that you might find out there. And the beauty of it is that you can you can you don't have to choose one. You can have many storage backends in your data center, yeah. right? So that is there, and then it will be um, as we as we talked before. It'd be just a decision on the on a per use cases. Uh, Canonical will be part of that. Canonical will have uh, a, a, a solution ready for each of those use cases by enabling partners, and obviously there will be uh, some of them that will be more. Uh, adequate to to you know, what the compliance and security turns on, right? Yeah, David, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love you to follow up on that. Sure. So the, the, there's the, the companies that have gone through the alphabet uh, from <laughs> from A through Queens right. um, and have the bumps and bruises. What's it like being a startup, getting into the the ecosystem? You know, more recently, what, what what's the opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I think with for us, it, the customers are at various points in their journey, right? So. We have to be able to qualify whether you're on Kilo or you're on Queens. And we have to be able to deliver a service that you know is rock solid. So that, that's, a, that's a, an onus on us to deliver that, make sure it's, it's bulletproof. So it's, it, takes, it takes a lot of work. Um, but the community's been great to work with. The customers view us as partners uh, and they're willing to work with you, which has been fantastic. You know. Okay. Want to give you both uh, the you know, final takeaways uh, for, from the event, uh, David? Do you want to start? Sure. Uh, so, as I was saying before, I think the conversations have been high-caliber conversations, right? Uh, I, it's been interesting for us because if you think about backup and DR, data protection is actually a much broader term, and I think it evolves. And I think we're in a great spot for it to evolve even further. We take a point, in, a workload, a point in time, right? If the conversation becomes about workload mobility inside your cloud, I can move it to any part, and that's some of the conversations that we've had, using backup for resource management, right? I want to move tenants from one availability zone to another availability zone, or I'm standing up a new, new cloud. That's just part of the byproduct of backup and, and recovery. One of the things that we're, we actually are uh, we're exploring and we'll We'll give a, you guys a nice showcase of this in Berlin, is that we'll be running scanners through our backups, doing more with points in time to give your tenants and your customers the ability to go back to the best last known state. You know it's clean. All the patches, the configurations, the antivirus type stuff. So this is going to be a, a great evolution. It's going to be a great journey. Having the ability of being a startup gives us the flexibility and, to, and we can be nimble where legacy data protection has 30 year old code <laughs> and they don't have that ability. So uh, it's been great. So as uh, you know, following up on, on what David said, right, the, uh, the uh, flexibility of, of having a data protection solution finally on OpenStack, being able to compare and win against all the private uh, cloud infrastructure is a, is, a great, is a great asset. The fact that OpenStack now uh, you see it's ready for Prime because it gets less media attention, it's not shiny anymore, it's not, it's not that interesting to talk about OpenStack, but everyone needs an OpenStack solution, right? Uh, the ecosystem landscape where have come from the distro wars uh, back in the day. Uh, we, we're not wasting time right there, right? So it's more of a, of a, of a filling a need that OpenStack opens up for, 
uh, and, and Trilio has done that very well in the, in the data protection uh, domain, right? It's been a great relationship. All right, David Safai, Arturo Suarez, thank you so much for joining us again. And check out thecube.net. If you go to the site, not only can you search by events and by guests, but if you put in keywords, for example, getting ready for this event, I typed OpenStack in and there were hundreds of interviews that we've done over the years, not only at this OpenStack Summit, but many of the other shows that have, that have talked about it. Go find them, poke around, uh, you know, so much content to be able to dig in. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, back with lots more coverage here at OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Thanks for watching theCUBE.